think I'm going to add on to what Mark did last week. So he, he covered aggressive match man defense. So the topic that I've been asked about today is building a full court press. Within reason, I guess a couple of things straight away is there is no right or wrong. So for me, in terms of doing what, I, doing what we do, it's a lot of concepts, a lot of philosophies, um, a lot of ideas and values that we share. So what I'm going to do with you guys is share those values and opinions with you guys. And if you like some of the stuff that we do and it fits with your philosophy, by all means, take it and incorporate it to some of the If you disagree with some of those philosophies, by all means, just feel free to check them out. Even, even listen to last week to some of the stuff Mark did, I didn't really think on some of these philosophies. And that's just the way it is. You know, if you guys will like some of the stuff I do, you guys will not like some of the stuff I do, just feel free to do it. So, just recap. S and O's for me is not a big thing, but it's the philosophies. Uh, with that being said, every coach has an idea. You know, they come into gym, they do something specifically for a specific reason. That's your philosophy. Now the question is, can you articulate your philosophy? Can you explain your philosophy to somebody who doesn't know you in two minutes flat? And if you can't, then you're probably not clear about what your philosophy is. As such, you've got to be able to explain your philosophy to your coaching staff. Does your coaching staff know your philosophy? Those are the guys who work with your players day in, day out, and share these values. So if your coaching staff doesn't know your philosophy, then you're not on the same page straight away. And with that being said, what about your players? Do they know your philosophy? Do they know what they're supposed to do rebounding-wise, offensive-wise, defensive-wise, etc., etc.? So the philosophy guys have made everything that we do. Um, and from my philosophy, from our values, they don't put in systems, whether they're offensive systems, defensive systems. In terms of the defensive system we put in, we've got a plan of action. The plan of action has three distinct components. The first one is clear responsibilities. So as such, when we come down to the full court press, we're going to identify things that we want to do. Once we've identified them with the coaching staff, we've got to clearly communicate to the players and we'll try and do that later on and tell them exactly what we expect from them. So there's got to be clear responsibilities. There is no ambiguity. There is no case of should I do this or that? Once we've clearly explained the responsibilities, we go to the second thing, which is consistency of practice. So are we doing the same thing day in, day out? Are we doing the same thing? So one of the things that we do with our press is we want our two guard on the right and right in terms of the press. And we want our two player on the left side. And it doesn't matter what happens. So if our two player gets involved in our office and shoots from the right up on the left corner, and he makes it, or she makes it, they've got to come right down here. If we have a three player here with that shot made, three players are going to go across and a two player that's from here. Now, is it quicker if three players still here and a two player got there? Essentially, they're exchangeable. It is quicker. Is it better? Is it more effective? That comes down to your philosophy. What do you want to do? For us, we're consistent. We always want a two player on the right side. We always want a three player on the left side. Every single time. And I'll tell you why it's going to go wrong. So, clear responsibility is consistency of practice. And then the third thing is it's got to be relatively simple. That was simple enough that the players can understand. Um, coach once said this to me, you cannot be complex in two or more areas. So if your offense is complex, your defense is very simple. If your defense is complex, then your offense is very simple. Two of the teams that I'm working with right now, the Irish are 16 men, so the Dublin are 15 ladies. We run the press the same with both teams, but they're different. With the Irish team, our defensive system is a lot more complex. Our offense, it just flows. It's simple. With the Dublin ladies, our offense is a bit more complex, so our defense, despite it being the same press, our defense is very simple. So we've modified it that way. So, so there's your plan of action, it's got to be clear responsibilities, you've got to have consistency of practice, and you've got to have it relatively simple. And I think when you can do these three things, you get certain benefits. Those benefits that we found is, number one, eliminates excuse me. So with our two player being here at the same time, you don't have a case where you've got two or three right beside each other and saying, well, I thought he was going to go across. You don't have it. Because it's clear. A two players got to be here, a three players got to be here, and everybody else has a role. So, the thing is, excuse me, when you have that, you can encourage accountability. And we do that with our players. So, we want our captains, we want our point guards, we want our leaders to encourage accountability. So, our point guard can now say, hey, you know, um, I think I heard from the government of Alex. One of the girls here, you Alex. You know, take a for a second. So, uh, point you out to whoever it is, they ask to the right wing, get the right wing. So where the players are not encouraging accountability because they know the two player has
consistent, they know that. Uh, eliminate speed making, encourage accountability. But this enhances team confidence. So when you have a player that does the same thing repeatedly, day in, day out, now you've got confidence that your team is going to do their job. I can do my job because I know, I know my teammate consistently does their job. And that essentially builds on to establishing trust within the team. So, same like I said, if I'm doing my job every single time, they're doing their job, I'm afraid to not do my job because I'm letting the team down. So, with what we do, it's a conscious process. We're not to really trying to do that, we try to build trust. Because when we can do that, we promote decision making. There is no thought process that, should I walk here, should I go to my blood brain? It's right here, every single time. There is no thought process that's done. I want to talk about something we said last week. One of the coaches mentioned that when their player guards the ball, let's say attacking that side, and the screen is called, that player starts stepping back and essentially gets nailed on the screen. Without knowing the full details behind that, I'll come to that team and say that team lacks trust straight away. Because this player over here cannot do her job because she's unsure of what's going on behind. Most coaches will tell you to pressure the ball if your player has the ball. Most coaches will tell you to force that. Ball. So if that's my job and I'm going to be here, but I have no idea what's going on behind me. I don't trust my teammates. If I get blown by, the coach is going to put me on the bench, then I can't do my job. So I'm step, stepping back. There is no trust. If I hear a screen, screen, and I have no idea whether the screen is coming right side or left side, because my teammates are not communicating, now I'm stepping back. Because I don't, I don't get nailed. Essentially, we get nailed. And as a result, you have players who are not decisive, because they have no idea what's going on, because they don't trust their teammates, because they don't have confidence in the system. So what we do, with the various things that we do, we are, we, it's a conscious process to get that. Um, so I know you guys can see next to those and plays and stuff like that and I'll get there. But like I said, this for us, in terms of teams we work with, this for us is important. We get this done early, we get this done consistently. Once we have this, then we can add the exit and we can do that. Uh, in terms of putting this into practice, in terms of putting this into practice, your next question is, well, what do you do in practice? What do you emphasize? I've worked with a lot of different teams. Fortunately, I guess. I've worked with a lot of different teams. One thing I see that happens a lot is that coaches try and cover a lot of different things. They try and cover rebounding offense. They want to be good free throw shooting teams. They want to be good zone defensive teams. But if you look at the good teams, they do one or two things really, really well. With the NCAA tournament recently gone, look at Syracuse. They're a great zone defensive team. Michigan State, great offensive rebounding team. UConn women's great transition offensive team. Louisville men's full court offensive team. That's their identity. Doesn't matter if it's next year, two years ago, three years ago, every team that plays it, whether it's the first game of the season or the last game of the season, you know exactly what you're going to get. Now, those teams practice six days a week, three hours at a time. Sometimes they do two a days. That does not include video sessions, that does not include strength and conditioning sessions, that does not include skill sessions. Yet they've got one simple identity. So then why do we try and do too much with two practices a week? And as such, what I'm trying to say is, if we can, as coaches, identify the one thing that we want to do and then get really, really good at it. So with the Irish team that I work with right now, the Dublin team, both teams press. From start to finish, they will press. Up 20 points, down 20 points, we're going to press. You know, it doesn't matter. We're going to press. We're going to press. That's our identity. As such, every practice session, we're going to hit. We come back to the pressing. Uh, why do you want to press? What do you want to get out of press? I think that's a question you've got to ask yourself. You've got to figure that out. Are you pressing to speed up the game? Are you pressing to slow down the game? You can do both. Are you pressing to create turnovers? Are you pressing to contain? Figure out as a coach what do you want to do? What do you want to get out of press? How do you measure it? If you're asking the teammates to press, if you're asking the players to press, but how do you hold them accountable? So what we do is we keep staff with our press. We want to keep track of deflections. They're huge for us. We want to average about 25 deflections a game. Uh, anytime we get a fingernail, a toe, a touch on the ball, that's a deflection. We want to keep track of forced turnovers, which are different from steals. So if I'm over here tracking the ball, and the ball is locked over, somebody else steals it, well, I go to turn. So we keep track of that. That's important for us. If I'm there tapping, and there's a five second call, we keep track of that. That's a forced turn, so we keep track of that. Uh, rush shots. If the offense breaks the press and then they shoot the ball in five seconds, 
That's my shot. That's out of rhythm. That's not their shot. I'm not talking about their. I'm talking about the shot. That's out of rhythm. We keep track of it. Uh, contested shots. So we want them to take out of rhythm shots to get rid of them, get a hand up in the face. Even if they're native, of course, that's the up press point. And the last one is hustle plays. We had uh, two months ago, we were going to play the England of the 16s. And our full guy on the press starts up here. He's up here, pressure the ball. And England will express really well on the top ball to win. And from there, they made a pass right over the half of the line. Our five guy came out and get it. And the ball was dumbed down and bounced past and was wide over the Somehow, I don't even know how. Our full guy is up there to block that shot. We're talking about England breaking the press with the ball in the goal. We got the block shot. That's a hustle play. We keep trying. We got to keep trying. We encourage them. Um, we also keep track of kills. Kills is anytime we get three stops in a row. We keep track of that. Turkeys is anytime we get five stops in a row. Getting five stops in a row is huge. If you get two of them in a game, you're doing really well. Kills, we want to average about five or six kills a game. Um, and we do that on Within the press, we want to make sure we have ball pressure at all times. Wherever the ball is on the floor, we want to make sure we have ball pressure. As coaches, if you run in the press, you've got to be patient. First time you run it, it's not going to work. Second time you run it, it's not going to work. Third time you run it, you'll give up about six laps in the game. You're going to pull your hair out and say, maybe you shouldn't do this. And if you cancel the press then, you're in trouble. you got to be patient with the press. you got to buy in. It will work. It might work in long squirts. It might work in short squirts, but it will work. About three years ago, we ran this with the years under 18. In this day, we're playing DCU in the National Cup quarterfinal. 28 points down. Five minutes left in the clock, we lose the game by two. We won a 26 mil run. Thank you. 26 mil run. We say we're the best. We, we actually happy with that loss because we got the shot, the last shot of the game, and our best shooter got that shot. And it was where she wanted to get that shot and missed it. But we say we're the best the entire game. So you got to be patient. You've got to do it. you got to teach your players how to sprint from one spot to the other spot. So Talking about that hustle play, talking about sprinting traps, talking about sprinting out of traps. You gotta have an awareness and teach your players how to have an awareness of where the next pass is coming through. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, and not to contradict, Mark talked about last week and it was a question. I didn't get engaged in this question because I didn't want to contradict me. Uh, question of whether you give up the jump shot in transition, we give that up every single time. We got three rules uh, within our defensive system. We're not going to give up layups, open layups, in the half court, full court, we do not give that up, ever. We do not give up rhythm shots. A rhythm shot is when a, catch, a player catches it, the rhythm pulls up and shoots that. So we will not give that up, and we don't want to give up second chance points. So when, you have, when you're pressing, the team breaks that press, and they come down, and our five guys standing here, if they want to pull up and take that, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm getting this free you you're done. You make that fun. We're good with that. But we're not going to give up a layup, and we'll give you that shot. That is not a shot team's practice. That is not a shot team's practice. And if they do that, then they probably deserve to make that. So we will give that up every single time. Um, so that's essentially kind of the, the basics of our press. I'll get the players up and running through. Before I do, you guys got any questions about what I just said? Nothing? Be good? Well, we don't have to answer this. This is a question of all the whole day. We don't have to wait for the half of the No. Wait on press. Wait on press the entire game. Actually, my, my system goes to get, you know, Ask you about that. Do you want to adjust? Do you want to take it down? Mm -hmm. uh, no. We're going to press the entire time. And I'll show you what we do. I mean, we're not, with the way we press, we're not going to give them the same look every time. And, and you'll see what I mean by that. We will adjust it. We will, we will keep them off balance. But we're going to press. <coughs> uh, with the with medias under the team this year, through our practice, we decided that it was not something we wanted to focus on. It was one year that it was one team that I would, you know, we tried to press early on in the season. And just decided it's not something I'm going to take my time to practice to do that. We had seven players at, at practice, it's pretty common. Talk about it, but if we had players, we could have pressed all game. All game. And you give up a lot of stuff in, in the first half, maybe third quarter, you make players, and everyone on the sidelines is wise to know that. The fourth quarter will come, the other team is shattered, you're going to build a run. You know, it will come. You press the tie game, the other team is going to be tired. And then last, last quarter, that's when Yeah. No, for the whole day. We just want to be very quick. No, I don't. We go for it. Uh, anybody else? 
Next defensive player is going to be, we talked about this last week, we've got a wall, rim line, whatever you guys call it. Our next defensive player, you're going to be here right on the wall. The defensive player right here on the wall. Get yourself in an outside position, get yourself as wide as you can. Okay? you got to be in a position where you somewhat got to see that way. So right now, I know you can't and I know I put you there, so you'll adjust as we go along and you take a step back. So you can see her. One player, you're good where you are. You go this side. And you know what? When we go through this, I will let the coaches adjust so you can see how we, we deal with different press breakers and stuff like that. So you're just going to stand here right now. And you're good. Let me get you to go. Hold on. Go to the far side. Okay. I'm talking about your responsibility. Not to compete after the line. After the line, after the line. You're fine. Now, I know you've got, I know the offense play. you got a strong arm. I would like to throw the ball. No, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, just do, just do, do me a favor. Go ahead and try it. No, no, you're, you're good. You're good. Don't worry. Just do the best you can. That's not. That's fine. Go ahead, throw it again. Go ahead, throw it. That's not. Five play. Our five. What's your name? Huh? Nee. That's exactly what you're looking for. Her job, her only job right now, is to look at inbound shoulders. Her shoulders will tell you exactly where she's going to pass the ball every single time. That's your only job. Every time she turns her shoulders to face the sidelines, that ball is going on. Pass the thing here. Watch stop. Do it back. Her shoulders will tell you exactly where she wants to pass the ball every single time. That's your only job. Do it pass it on. Stop. Let it. Let it. Stop. That happens, you back up. Because you know what's going on, you're anticipating, you're aware of what she's about to do, you're getting to see it. Pass it right here, stop. You start coming back up. And you've got to be active for about five seconds because that's all she has. Now, not, not over the half of the line, because that's yeah, your teammate's job. Okay. But you know, you know she's not going to make this pass. Her shoulders are right here. And these are the two positions. So we teach our players how to read the game. Here, it's a short pass. Here, it's going long. Now, I've never seen a player put the ball over the head and throw an overhead pass that way. Put the ball over the head for a second. For me, anytime this has happened, they're going down the middle. You're picking that up. So now, we're still talking to the five player. She puts the ball over her head. You know your teammate's name. You are talking. It's you. What's her name? Grace. So, E for Grace. Knee Grace, knee Grace. So on this, hey Grace, this is yours. Come in your way. Throw along. I got this, I got this. You're dropping back. Pass it short. All right, up top. What's her name? Coda, you got this. The entire time. The entire time. Now our next player we said somebody caught uh, intelligent. Your job is not only to look at the shoulders, the eyes. Pass it on. See the eyes. Pass the shoulder. Pass it there. Every single time. I've never seen, I'm looking to do this for, like I said, for about eight years. I've never seen, except the Irish boys. The, the Irish team decided to get answer with me. They decided to do this. Yeah. And you know what? Fine, I'll, I'll live with that. I know other teams are not going to do that. And I know for a fact one of the boys did that in the game, and they messed up, they're sitting on the bench. So I'll let them do it. Because they know, they mess that up, they're on the bench. So her eyes will always tell you where she wants to go. She's looking across, you're talking. Talk to your teammates, you're, you're telling her what to do. She goes this way, you're talking to me, you're telling her to drop back. Now you can't see me. It's not your job to see me. Give us the ball here. Why not let you turn it on? Great stop. Oh, this is your job, because your job is to look at her eyes and shoulders. She winds up. Need is saying, I got this, it's going on. But your job is to give her a reminder. See, reminders are only useful if they're given before they're needed. So you can't wait and then say, Need, you should have got that, because that's complaining. So you see this happening. Hey, he dropped that, it's coming your way. Wind up here. You're talking. Claudia, 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 you're Claudia coming your way. But Need, you're talking the entire time too. Now I got two players talking. You're looking at the shoulders, you're looking at the eyes. Okay. Now this is an adjustment we made with our four player, because if the ball goes from here to here, it's her job to trap. She's got to turn, face, find, and go. So we made an adjustment. We're now here with the one foot over the line. Because this, I can see balls pass, I'm sprinting, and the other thing that happens to me is she cannot go across. So we made an adjustment with our teams here. There we go, as that one. And you're right. Remember, we only got to hold it for five seconds. We're in a stance, 
The reason we're in this stance as opposed to here is so she sees me narrow, she sees my side, she sees a lot of the space, but now she sees me wide. It's a difference. She's, she knows she can't pass that way without a full player active. Now she's worried about passing the ball in here because you look a lot bigger than you should be. If you were here denying, that pass, you know, she sees a lot of space, they might flash somebody up. So we're changing the body up. We're changing here. And we've got a player here. Pretty much. Right. So if you make yourself wide and we be like this, all of a sudden there's no room. And I know my teammates. So, I'm a grace, you gotta make sure the ball is on the box. You got it? Okay, pass the ball in here. Just pass the ball in there. Now you start moving. You're gonna move across right here. And you're gonna make sure she doesn't get the side. So, we put your step behind. So, you're not rushing to the set. You're not rushing to steal. But you're rushing to make sure she does not get the side. We're allowed to pass. We're gonna let that pass. So, if that happens, you turn your body. Now, here's the change we've made as well. We're not going to spin straight to the top. It's got to be held. It takes long, but it tells me she's not going to be the top. So from here, boom. It takes long. But if she catches the ball and you're coming down this way, she can split that and then you will make it to me. And this is happening a couple of times for us. So we've made that change. She's sprinting down here. Now if she tries and goes middle, she's running into me. And then I'm coming up here. Your teammate is going to contain her until you get it. So your job is to rush the ball. Do me a good ladies defensively. Talk the entire time. We're just gonna make this pass, we're gonna trap it. Okay? Talk, go ahead, talk, 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 talk. Stop, come back again. Good job. Okay. Very few 
teams will break the press by going down the sideline. That's a prime trapping area. Very few teams will do that. If they try to do that, they will try and adjust the steal the ball or trap the ball. And if they're consistently beating us, we will make another adjustment, which I'll show you. But very few teams will do that. The final way that the team can break us is lob the ball across, but that is never by design. That's just the player decided to, uh, you know, pick the only time, which is fine. So we're right here where we. Can you move up? Sorry, what's your name? Lily. Lily? Excellent, just move up. So let's just say she beats you down. We're still in read, we're still in read. She beats you down. Three. Read. Everything we're doing right now is read and I'll run to it with you. So, you know the way you got the press, we call it black or white? Okay. Read. Read. Okay. So you're sprinting with her. Wait a second. You're dropping back now. See that question about the run? You're thinking about this, you're stunted. You know what I mean by stunt? You're fake. Okay? You're fake. But the only reason you're fake is until Grace comes back. Because I don't want you that. Okay. I want Grace to come here. As the one player, as she starts coming down, the job is to come across here, and you're going to be the second guy. So go back again. We're still in reach. We're still in reach. Inbound the ball. Inbound the ball. Go ahead. Never should be talking. Go ahead. We're trapping. Let's say she beats you down the sideline. You're moving across. Stop. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Ashton, you're coming down the middle. You're coming down the middle. You're thinking about, right, so you're coming, you're denying that pass. Come with her. Dribble the ball. Now here's, we leave this to the players. Should you trap above or below the halfway line, we let the players decide that. We got some smart players on the edge and we let them figure things out. I usually like to trap here because once she crosses this, she Trap here, that's also good, cool with us because now she has, she has eight seconds to get the ball. So we're okay with either one. So we're trapping this, and let's just trap here. Boom. You're not worried about that. You're sprinting back. Sprinting back. That, that's the one we worry about. Number one, we don't give up players. Number one, we don't give up players. So we don't want our five players to come across. She's going to stunt, and she's getting back. We're not giving up players. Yeah, so you, you, you stunted, let Grace come across. If this pass goes through, who cares? If she takes a layup, we're in trouble. We don't give the players. You guys are communicating once you get back, uh, Grace. Once you get, you, once you get back, we need to get down. Let's go back and drop. I'll let you guys try and steal this now, okay? Defense, we're going to try and steal this. Defense, when you get a steal, we're going to score a layup. Okay? Go ahead. Libby, you can do whatever you want. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, you're reading her shoulders, and her shoulders are now facing the middle of the floor one time. 
your job is to be there. Not at all. Grace just coming down the side. Grace just coming down the side. Every single time she drops the ball, her eyes and shoulders are face down the side. Yeah. So we've got you two holding each other down. So do I wait until she's like, until she's beating? So give her the ball. Give her the ball. This is going to happen when you sprint the trap. I'll just do whatever you need to do right now. You want to stop. Now you're here. You're here. Go ahead. Keep doing, keep doing what you're doing. We're just walking through. Because everything in her body right now tells me she's coming here. I'm going to trust my teammates, Coda and Grace, uh, and Grace that to make sure it's a trap, to make sure she gets out of bounds. But just on the outside, when it gets beat, I want to be here. I want to be ready. Does that make sense? Yeah. If she starts looking, so go back, take a step back. Let's say you pick up the ball right there. Let's say you pick up the ball right there. You're, you're coming down. You're coming down this way. You pick up the ball and face it. Face this way. Face up. It's really active. Did you say it's over now? What? You just start to be active for about eight seconds. Ball and ball and bounce. Ball out and bounce. Now we talk about relative. We keep things relatively simple. With this team, we're not going to move on to read possibly all season. Uh, I'm not being funny about it. We're not going to move on to read possibly all season. With, with, with the Irish team, we went on. Uh, I kid you not, we put it forward one day. And you'll see what I mean by the next one. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, with this team, we're probably not going to read. Go ahead. Pass it in. Get on the ball. Stop on the Keep up. Good. Good. Get it. Score. Get it. Get it. Get it. Inbound the ball again. Leave him back to the left. Leave him back to the No, you just stay in the key. You don't come out of it. See that jump shot? Fine. What? You know, you can give him a jump shot, get the hand of it, but you don't give him a lift. Sit there again. So I'm going to step off. But I can see her. Her shoulders are facing this way. Knee and waist 
on that side. Should be talking to me. Hey, good job, coach. Good job, Ashley. Well, stay up there. Good trap. You got to keep talking the entire time. So she's facing this way. She makes that pass. Ball's in the air. Hot dog. So we're squeezing. We're not worried about Alex right now because we've read them. We know they're about to make this pass this way. We've in read, we look at the first couple possessions, we'll see what they do. Most coaches have the same philosophy, great to press the exact same way. So we know they're about to do this, we call screens, we're about to get that. So we ask them, you're up top. You guys are fine, you're reading the body language. Grace, what's her body telling you right now? She's passing that way. Nate, what's her body telling you? Pivot. And you're adjusting, you gotta adjust. So with that, you gotta move up your engine now. Adjust again, okay. You're thinking about getting it. Yes, in grace way of moving. Okay, get the ball over here, inbound it. Okay, go back to your positions. That's squeeze. Squeeze. Now I'm going to try and move on. So the next one we have is stay. Like I said, with the Irish team, we call them on the fly. After a score, as soon as the bass, as soon as the shot's taken, we can shout it out and our boys adjust. With the double team, and, and all the players in the double team, she'll tell you we haven't done anything so. Okay, so stay. You're in the right position. Ball gets fast. I got you game for one second. Ball gets fast here. Stay. So you're dropping out feel like you're going to do the trap. Step here. In. You're about to receive the ball. You're about to do that. And the reason we go stay is we might, they might have got the ball a couple of times here and quickly reverse to Alex. So now we're staying. She fakes like she's going to trap. Comes right back here. And we're staying in this position. So the four stays there. Our, our, our three guard or our opposite weak side guard is staying in her position and you're maintaining your pressure in the ball. And we know she's not about to blow by us because the first couple of possessions she looks to reverse the ball to move on. So we read, the first couple of possessions we read what the, what the offense is trying to do, then we adjust. Then we adjust. Okay? So I'm Again, with the Irish team, they do that. They, they've picked up some things that 
your billet plane. So that's really squeeze and stay. Let's get the ball back again. We go to those three. So brace your top. Again, you your fly position. Um, Claude will take a step in. Now we're gonna slide. We're gonna slide. Can you move upside? Move upside. Fine, so you can see. So on slide, we're gonna make that pass across. You're gonna slide right over. But you're being aware, so if you're talking, you should have seen her moving up slightly, you should talk, tell her. So we're sliding right across to about here, and I'm here because she just moved up for whatever reason. And it's fine, you're fine to move up, that's fine to move You're spinning back. We're just spinning back. Sorry. We're in a 2 to one We've just gone from a 1 2 one one matchup into a 2 to one And it's done really good. So Grace Ash with slide. As soon as the ball goes in, Grace, you're going to be patient. Ashley's going to take the middle, and then you're sprinting. And I want everybody to sprint. That's how you move. Let's get the ball back here. Come on. Pressure the ball. We slide. We slide. Quick, 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 quick. Right. Now we do that. We do that because we now know they want, they want to go visit. Because from read, from read, we realize that they try to break down the middle the last couple of times. As a result of them trying to break down the middle the last couple of times, we call slide. And we slide. Ashley gets across. Mullins moves. moves. Slides across and we're good. Good. Uh, was it I go in the trap? No. No. On this one, okay, after, after you slide, you're good. Chloe's got this. As she comes down, so go ahead, put the ball down. Stay right there. Hold on a second. Um, I'm covering something. I'm, I'm going through quickly. I know that. Another rule for our players is they're always going to be in line with the ball or behind the ball. So Chloe and Ash, what I want you guys to do, and I just being cheap as she should be as she should be, but what I want you guys to do is move in with the ball, so stay in line with the ball, or behind the ball. So see where the ball is right now, Grace? So are you, are you ahead of it, or behind it? You, so if you, drew a, if you drew a line, side line, side line. So in line with the ball, be in line with it. If you're up here, you're ahead. So you want to be behind the ball, or in line with the ball. So go ahead, come down the court. Come down the court. You're stunted. You're sprinting with her. You're starting, go ahead, come down, come down, come down, Because now she can't go back. She can't. That's a, that's a turn, right? Yeah. Uh, Ashley, you're moving. Grace, you got the next one. If she wants to make that pass, we'll let it go. That's a turn off anyway. Ellie is never going to sit here on that. She's not. She's usually going to go. Again, we didn't tell this move, so that's fine. Lily, sorry. We did this last week as well, didn't we? Yeah. Lily, Lily, my bad. Go back again. Go back again. Go so we're flying, we're flying, go ahead, quick, 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 fire, fire, and that's good, that's good, let's go again, again, I know I'm throwing a lot at you guys, and I, I did say, well, it's simple, and I did say that with the Irish team, our offense is really simple, so our defense is complex, with slide, you guys don't need to remember this, Mike will tell you if you're doing next year or not, with slide, there's two differences, there's an automatic, and there's a call. What we just did right there is a call. We call it from the sideline, they're sliding. If we call read, squeeze, or stay, and the ball gets passed over the free throw line, it becomes an automatic slide. So let's just do read for now. You guys remember read? No? That's fine. That's fine. Maybe it's fast right here. We're going to head and trap. Uh, Ashton, you do the way you are, and that was read. That was read. Go ahead. Put the ball in. If for whatever reason the has fallen asleep, or Grace hasn't done her job, and she catches the ball here, for whatever reason, she will decide who had this at the time uh, our two players just kind of fallen asleep and up here, and the offense catches the ball behind. So if that ball is locked across, let it go across. Stop. On this, it's an automatic slide, every single time. So if we call me, we call squeeze, we call stay, and the ball gets passed over this top player, it's an automatic slide. Grace is coming right across that side, it's an automatic slide. Just put it right down the middle, and your job is to get there. But she's not going to go, so you, your job is to just make sure you get there. It's an automatic slide. Uh, before you do that, come over here. Every time she's got the ball, she's turning. 
I, I have a huge problem with this, and it's not on you. It might always do. So with her giving the ball down this way, I hate when I see my players trying to slide. Mark covered this perfectly last week. He said in the open court, you cannot slide with the player. You've got to turn and sprint. Now I know some coaches tell their players not to cross step. I actually love the cross step right now. So on a slide, I will, if we're gonna slide, we cross step. So let me take this one. She's got the ball, she starts dribbling this way. You'll see some players who do this. That's terrible at spinning. You're never doing anything. So let me right up here doing this. That gives the illusion that I'm playing defense. I'm not playing defense at all. Nobody can sprint that way and have their shoulders facing that way. It's just terrible. Terrible for their body, first of all. So if she gets ahead of me and she starts dribbling, she wants to get to a certain spot. If she beats me, she wants to get to the last. She wants to move that way. So with her dribbling, I'm spinning this way. When I get in line with her, I'm going to jab with my hand a couple of times. Usually if you jab with the first one, she hesitates. It's a hesitation move, slows her down, allows her to get, uh, allows her to get ahead of her. Now, if we were reading, if we were squeezing, you know the trap is coming from the middle, if, if we're up there. I'm going to plant my foot across and get in position. But I'm sprinting, giving her that space. My job is to sprint ahead of her, cut her off, and get in that position. Go back again. I know that's a lot. Getting the pin across, so then it's not going to be good. Turn around and face this way. Second one on, on, on the defensive slide, go ahead and dribble. That's my slide. One, two. That way. If I'm really good at sliding, go ahead and dribble. It's a huge one. I'm off balance. Go ahead and do that again. Coach tells us, Coach tells us not to cross the point. One, two. That's a cross. Cover more ground more efficiently. Come back here. Major difference. On a cross step, I've engaged my glutes. Glutes are the most exposed muscle in the body. So I've gone really quickly there. In the right direction. Hips turn, let go. One, two. Yeah, that's good. As soldiers sometimes when we hit our players, we tell them to slide. Go ahead and do that again. I'm using my other up this. They're really weak. You get groin injuries that way. You get groin, players can I do the groin. Technically, it's our fault. We tell our players to slide all the time. If she's quicker than me, don't tell your player to slide. It's got to be a cross. It's got to be a cross. So, she does that. You just don't want your players to cross up behind. Because now they're having these issues. Now they're all over the place. So, I guess that's something I'm really particular about. So, sorry, I went off too again. Come on, here. So, we went through read. We went through squeeze, stay, slide. Next one we have is drop. Am I moving too quickly for you guys? Yeah. Next one we have is drop. So in the same position, make that pass across. As the ball is in the air, right? As the ball is in the air, we're going to drop. Now, this is a tough one. It throws off and tough balance because all of a sudden they have to do. You're saying we've got to take the middle. And we do this when Mullins was moving across and Ashton hasn't got there really quickly. Ball goes down the middle. We've given that up a couple times. So now we know she's looking for that. You're going to sprint right there. Very soon. And we've actually given her a lot of space. But because we know she's always looking for that and she has had the last one or two times, we know she's not thinking that. So we call this and you're going to get right ahead. And we're back into a 2 to 1. Uh, we call this drop. So read, squeeze, stay, slide, drop. Again, with the average team, they picked all of them. As soon as the ball is passing, she's sprinting and she's getting ahead. And by all means, if, for whatever reason, over here, she starts dribbling, we just went back to our sprinting, we just went back to you know, getting ahead, and Cody's going to trap with you in a 2 to 1. And, and, and Mullins over there is taking away the middle pass, Ashton over there is engaging. But one thing we want, uh, she'll come to you, she'll come to you. On most of these, I didn't cover this. Not only are we going to be in line with the ball or behind the ball, but we're always going to overload. So Alex being that cheeky player that she is, I'm not, I'm not, that's not a bad thing by the way. If she decides to go along and we love that, we give that up every single time. I'm okay with that. We are okay with that. Give that lob pass up. Because we know our players are going to sprint into traps, out of traps, into position, out of position. Neve on the far side, is feeling left out at this stage, is taking away the limits. Her job is to get back in there, 
and she will give up any jump shot. Play out the school and shoot here because the knee doesn't want to come out. Go ahead and take that because that's the last shot you get. You better make it because if it, you miss, it's my rebound. And we give up one shot every time. So we will get the rebound everybody else is coming in. Any questions on that? Yeah? No? <clears throat> Again, with the Irish boys that picked it up in a, in a three hour session, we, we put it in on a Sunday, February 14th, Valentine's Day. We flew out, we flew out on the 15th. We played Charmwood on the 15th. We ran uh, Reed and Stay. We put all this on, on the Sunday. On Tuesday, we played Wells on the 18th. We ran Reed and Squeeze. On Wednesday, we played the English on the 16th national team. And the boys adjusted really well. They, they ran Reed. The English actually scouted us, knew what we were doing in Reed. And, so they tried to break us down the middle. We ran through slide. It didn't work, so we adjusted, added, and dropped at a timeout. So we talked about being relatively simple. If you've got players who are quite intelligent, you've got players who are who are just who are just athletic, who will just get it, you can you can do a lot of different stuff with them. And like I said, the English boys broke this down a couple of times, and we had a full player getting back ahead of everybody else, blocking shots down that side. Because we want our energy guy. We want our least mobile player down that side because she doesn't have to move a lot. Or in our case, um, I don't need to mention names, but our player is really good. He's about 6'9". He doesn't move at all. David knows what I'm talking about. He's not in the set right now. He played in the ACCs recently. What they do with him in the club team is they'll put him here, and they'll run match to match defense, and then leave him here. As a result, he hasn't got any mobility. He's just used to, at 6'9", playing on the 16, he's just used to doing this. So we, we either don't pick him on the Irish team, or we pick him and adapt our high defense to him. So that's what we do. You know, put him back there, and just leave him there, and he's fine.
Grace over here, mothers of Asia, are easy job for stop your teammates and lifters, anybody that's involved in the fight. Right now, go ahead and get past the side if you want. Because if she did that, because we all know who this player is that passes over the middle. We don't want to go in the middle. That happens, come across, get on the outside, break it down the sideline, go ahead and dribble on this. Uh, right? Spring down the middle because these two guys are about to go in the middle. We're overloading strong side. You're reading. Right now, Grace, again, I'm not picking on you, but we put a smart player in your position. Who you got right now? Look at your spear area. You probably don't even need to be there. So, in this case, Code is going to be slightly apart. Code is going to slightly high. Grace, do it. Take a step back. You're good. Because right now, and obviously, in, in a game, these three players are going to be standing where they are. They're, they're going to move. And, and obviously Grace and Claude are going to adjust. But right now, we're trapped with this. Claude, are you reading out your body language? Grace, you are talking to Claude because you know that pass is not coming down the middle. We will let this pass come back. They got eight seconds. They got eight seconds to get across. So we will let this pass come back. You're denying the middle, Claude. Her body tells you. So, Alice, I know you've been cheeky so far, so I know you're going to do something cheeky. So do whatever I don't tell you. Okay, that's it. Whatever I tell you, do the answer. Uh, Grace, you're going to adjust, Claudia, you're going to adjust. If this pass comes here, I want you to see this for me. And that pass is coming here. Okay, go ahead, right, do something. You know, to a certain extent. Um, but if, for example, Claudia decided not to do that, ball just went backwards. It's going away from our basket. We're good with that. We're, we're good with that. Um, another thing that I give the eyes for is a couple of, some more freedom. Uh, one of the things that I've done, can you guys adjust to come back to your spots? Let's just go to squeeze real quickly. Uh, what's your name? Ethan. You're going to hit the ball. You're going to take two dribbles and then pick it up. Okay? You guys are going to trap. Uh, so, sorry, we're going to go squeeze. We're going to squeeze. Go ahead, make that pass. So we're squeezing and uh, pick it up. Now stop. The Irish boy decided to do this without telling me, and I thought it was genius. On this, go back up there and deny that pass. Greg's go ahead, get that pass. Ashley, get Alex. Go She's got eight seconds. She just used it really. What are you gonna do? And sometimes we trap up here, you know, put us in our players in the foul, bail them out. For whatever reason, I don't know why, they decided to just leave the ball. They all went away from it. And all of a sudden you got played. I was like, hang on a second, this might actually work. So we made the call. We we decided to make this a call and uh, we let our opponent do this. So he will decide when to do it and if he doesn't decide and I think it's time to be able to do it. Because in fact, we're going to do this with anything else. Um, again, so, so we got a couple of different things there. Um, like I said, our, our boys with the Irish team are really clever. They'll come up with a few different things. Every time we're shooting a free throw, they will always come up to me and explain their choices. And if it's rational, if it makes sense, if I think they're thinking the game, then we'll let them go ahead and play it. If I think it's something ridiculous, we'll, we'll just have to add on it and play the rest. Yeah. Now. Okay, they gotta go. You guys gotta go. Get a lot of sleep. <laughs>